Hey guys, welcome back to part 3B. Uh, last time we got the short block assembled. Now we're going to get this uh, head on here. And I've got to get my uh, dowel pins out of my paranoia bag here. Because I would have lost them. <laughs> yeah. Now on this one, I'm going to be using quite a thick head gasket. Uh, this is just going to be for the break-in. But uh, this one's right at about 50 thousandths thick. And, yeah, by the time I compress it, it might go down a little bit. But, uh, yeah, right at 50. And when I pull the head back off to uh, change to the valve springs back over to the, the racing springs after it runs in, then uh, I'll probably go with around a 34 thousandths thick head gasket. But uh, you'll have to kind of excuse me here. I'm trying to uh, line those dowel pins up in the head. There we go. But you guys know how this goes. It's, uh, I, read, I went ahead and put those bolts in there. Now I'm just going to run through them with a torque wrench. And these are torque at 17 foot-pounds. Uh, if you're using your little inch-pound wrench here, it's 203. And, you know, just kind of crisscross it here if you can. If I can get the wrench on here. Uh, on these, it's not as important as it is for the metal shim gaskets. But, uh, you know, these are a little forgiving. But, uh, you know, just try, try to crisscross it if you can. And then when you get close, right up to where your, your wrench is about ready to click, you know, you can go around them. Oh yeah. And if you've been following along, uh, you know there is a, another video out uh, where I did a uh, test on the Tillotson without a fuel pump. And that does feature this engine in it. <laughs> and speaking of Tillotson, uh, we're going to go ahead and install this uh, Tillotson diaphragm type carburetor on here and to do that I'm going to get rid of these studs so to pull those out you know I always just lock a couple of nuts together and that's the easiest way to do it and yeah one of these things works pretty good too but now before I stick the intake on there I'm that gasket's kind of stuck on the head, so I'm just going to use that gasket. It's fine. And I'm going to use a uh, <clears throat> gasket trimming tool here and uh, try to trim off any excess gasket that's sticking inside the port because we want a nice smooth fit there. So, you know, just use your uh, preferred gasket trimming tool and uh, just kind of whittle off the... Uh, anything that's sticking inside the port and then uh, that'll be good and you know everybody just kind of match up it's d-shaped intake d-shaped port you can't make it can't make a mistake i'm kind of noticing here that uh, bolt's not really starting very well in there i don't know if the threads are just really sharp on it or uh i've got the wrong thread that seems okay but I'm going to go ahead and stop and double check. Uh, it's always a good idea. Now I've got that nut there fit the stud perfectly and it fits this uh, bolt here perfectly. So I know I do have the correct thread type. And it's just uh, kind of a pain when you've got big fingers like this. And you, some of you guys know what I'm talking about. And you're working in a small spot. But uh, just try to run those up and... Get you a turn or two in threads, you know, start them by hand. And once you get it start, uh, started turning, then you can put your wrench on there. Now I've went ahead and run these up because there's no need in uh, 
showing that on the video, but yeah, the final torque just kind of snug them both up. And these intakes are pretty nice. Uh, they don't have a place for a pulse fitting, which I was kind of surprised. But, uh, you know, nevertheless, it's still a good looking intake. Matches up to the port pretty good. Now this port is not, I mean, excuse me, this head is not ported, so uh, I've got stock ports in there. And here's another situation where having big fingers is not exactly uh, the greatest thing in the world. Uh, you guys with small hands and and girls with small hands, you know, you guys, you guys and girls can get in there and get those a lot easier than I can. But once you get it, it can be done. And uh, just run it up. Got the gasket in place. We made sure our hole lines up. And our uh, pulse, pulse port on the carburetor lines up with the intake, so we're in good shape. Now I'm going to go ahead and get these push rods down into the uh, lifters. And next we're going to get these rockers on here. I'll tell you a little secret. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use the uh, the rocker retainer off the Ghost engine because I really like that retainer. It's much better. Oh, well, shoot. My push rod fell out on me, but that's okay. I'll just kind of tighten them back down here to where it doesn't fall out again. And we'll get all that slack out of there when we get the valves adjusted. But uh, the Ghost has got a uh, much better uh, pin retainer for those rockers. And I'm, I'm going to use one of those. And I think these are available at Dyno Cams. I'm not sure. I'm, I'll, if, I, if I can find it, I'll give you the part number. Uh, I'll put it down in the description or something later. But uh, yeah, these are really handy. Much better, much easier than fooling with those... Uh, Little E clips that go on the end. Oh boy, those things are horrible. Much better idea right here. And we're going to run through here and I'm going to turn this. And you see that exhaust valve? Kind of, the exhaust valve's on the left. It kind of bumped. That's an exhaust stroke there. That's an intake stroke. That is the compression release. Just as soon as you pass that, right there. As soon as you pass that compression release on the exhaust stroke, stop right there. That should put us right at where we need to be to adjust both of our valves at the same time. And I'm going to start off with three. And, uh, you know, if uh, you're just on the fly in a hurry, uh, you know, you can just open one valve up all the way and then adjust the valve that's closed and then just switch back and forth. Now these Hemi's are much, much easier, much easier to adjust the valves on. Um, usually I'll get them first or second try. You know, with those uh, non Hemi's, oh boy. <laughs> yeah, well, you can go seven or eight times and before you get it. And that can be frustrating, but these are, uh, these are a walk in the park. I really like these. And usually I'll make that feeler gauge where I feel the drag, but it's a little loose. And then when I tighten down this adjustment on these Hemi types, it kind of tightens up the drag just a little bit. That one there, I think I tightened it up a little bit too much. There, there we go. No. Yeah. Usually only a time or two with the, the Hemis and you're good to go. And after I get done, come on, <laughs> after I get done, I'm going to rotate this engine. 
and we'll just run it all through a cycle here. And remember, uh, when I installed that camshaft, I put some really thick lube on there. And so this is where you kind of got to watch. So, you know, you want to check your valves to make sure everything is okay after you rotate it. So I set them, I rotated it, and now my intake valve is feels a little loose. But that's okay. Just loosen him up. Give me some drag on there. Tighten down the lock nut. Good to go. Let's try it again. Rotate through the cycles. Watch it on that. Yeah. You see that little bump on the exhaust valve there? As soon as it came came back up, now I'll check my settings again. That feels pretty good right there. Exhaust feels good. I think we got it. Now, this is the PVL flywheel uh, that came with the Dakar. It's got a really nice magnet on there. And I'm going to lap this uh, flywheel in. And, you know, I put a generous amount <laughs> of lap, valve lapping, valve grinding compound on there, on the taper. Then I'll put some more in the uh, inside of the flywheel. Now, the inside of this flywheel is steel. That's kind of kind of different. Like it's uh, got a pressed in uh, steel fitting inside the aluminum flywheel. But that's okay. And I'm going to try Puller Bear Ed's method on this one. I'm turning it clockwise. And I'm only going to turn it one direction. Now, my other hand is on the other side of the crank. I've got a wrench on that side and I'm holding it. And I pull the flywheel out a little bit so I can get some more gr fresh grit in there. And continue turning it clockwise. And kind of let it uh, seat itself on that shaft. Now I'm, I can feel why that was turning. It was trying to grab the crankshaft pretty good. So we'll see what it looks like here. Well. I guess it would help if I actually sprayed the carb cleaner onto the crankshaft. Boy, that was a mess. But, uh, you yeah, know, I'll clean this off a little bit more. And yeah, don't soak that seal with carb cleaner now. I succeeded in making a mess that everything looks like. But from what I'm seeing here, ha, that looks good. So... Full points to Puller Bear Ed. Looks good. Now let's check out the uh, inside of the flywheel here. The bore. How did it do? Yeah. It's got a nice gray area right through there. And you see the shiny part here on the outside. That's where it was not on the taper. So yeah, I think we got a really good uh, lapping job here. I'm glad I tried that. Now, this flywheel, it's kind of hard to see that mark. So uh, I'm going to mark the end of the crankshaft here a little bit. And uh, since I've got a little oil or something on there, it's, it's not really uh, my marker. I don't know, maybe my marker's bad too. But I'm kind of, that key keyway is kind of sitting off to the left a little bit. Kind of hard to see. Now, I'm not going to run a timing key in mine. I'm just going to line it up right about the slot. Making sure. <laughs> right about in, somewhere around in there. And this is the only difficult part, you know, lining it up.
you know, and you can run a, a key, a key, a piece of key stock in there if you want to. I just don't really run them on mine. I, I don't see any need for them. Oh, look what I did. Now I turned their flywheel back. Now I've got it. <laughs> right there. Stay, stay. Now I'm just tapping that a little bit so it'll stay on the taper right there and not move for me while I uh, start this. Uh, yeah, I'm verifying it. Okay, we're good. It's in there. I can see it from here, Chris. Come on. I'm going to put the starter cup on there. And I've got to turn it a little bit. I'll take care of that. And I went ahead and tightened that up off camera because uh, some people seem to get excited about my method. Now, sometimes, you know, kind of get me, my kid confused if you've had this off for a while. You know, which way does it go? Does this plug wire go up or does it go down? Well, I always mount it with a plug wire up. And, uh, you know, you got to keep in mind, this thing would mount either way, but it will, it will only work one way. So if, if it's been a while since you've had yours apart, just keep in mind that plug wire always goes up. And normally to set your air gap, you could use a, a business card like this one, but I'm not going to use this one. This is David's card. This is... <laughs> David's the one I uh, got bought the uh, tools from uh, to cut the valve reliefs in the piston. Um, I'm going to use a thickness, uh, three, two or three pieces of cardboard there together or card stock, and it's up to around 40 thousandths. Now, uh, Dino recommends to set your air gap on your coil between 38 and 40 because these do have some pretty good magnets and uh, you know they are kind of tough on coils. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to set mine up around 40 and uh, you know I'm kind of pushing down on that uh, coil, kind of trying to mush that card stock against the flywheel while I tighten this down. And I don't know what the torque specs are on these guys. I just kind of snug them down and uh, you know, I'm sure if, if you look online, you could probably find torque specs for this, but, you know, it's not going to be much. I'll get my pieces of card stock I had folded up there, and we're good to go. Air gap is set. Now let's install my uh, kill wire on the coil, and that just plugs in. And you can run it on the inside or the outside of the coil. It's got a little notch there that'll hold the wire either way. Uh, this time I'm going to run it on the outside of the coil so you guys can see what I'm doing. But just run her through to the top of the block. And you've got a couple little places up here cast into the block. And those are perfect. They hold the wire. Just kind of feed the wire down in there. You'll see what I'm talking about. And I've got a little retaining bracket on this one. It just you fit the wire in there, kind of bend that little metal piece closed. There we go. The kill wire is installed and back there at the back near the switch where it's going to be hooked up later. And let's get this thing on here. You guys have seen this. Now that's my ground wire from my kill switch. What I'm going to do, you know, I'm just going to stick it on in behind here. And you could mount that anywhere on a block you wanted to. But uh, since it kind of stays with the, uh, the switch mounted to the pull start, I'm just going to kind of keep it here close to where if I need to take this starter cover off, you know, I don't have to remove a separate bolt to get that thing out. And come on, line up for me. There we go. You guys know the drill on this side cover. Four bolts. And these are all uh, eight millimeter on this one. Just run them up and I should have done, I thought I had this one run up further, sorry guys. But uh, yeah, we've covered this a time or two. Two at the top, two at the bottom. All right. 
We've got our ground up there, switch. Now we've got to plug our switch into our coil wire or kill wire right off the coil we just ran. Now I'm just going to fold these up and stick them in here. You know, if you want to, you could like tape them up or put some shrink wrap around it or something, whatever you want to do. But for now, this is, this is fine by me. This is a top plate I was thinking about using on this one, but I'm, I'm going to try to use the, the stock gas tank with this one. And this top plate came with a fuel pump and some, and some fuel line. And I purchased this one off the Bay Place. But uh, rather than running that on there, I'm going to try this uh, stock fuel tank. Because I think what I'm going to do, this is going to, this is going to go on a... If I don't change my mind, I'm going to put, put this one on one of the Baja Warrior bikes. And I'm thinking about doing some comparison runs. Uh, mount this Dukar on one of the Baja Warriors. And then I'm thinking about just putting the Ghost 212 back together like it came from the factory. And mount that on the second Baja Warrior. And maybe do some drag racing, uh, you know, make sure the, the weight is equal between them and everything. And then drag race my son around and see, we'll see who's got the best performance. Now on this one, I'm going to have to run a pump. So I'm going to mark this valve cover and I'm marking it below the secondary level up there at the top. Because what I want to do is drill this thing out to where uh, you know I can mount a barb fitting for the pulse. Now here I've got it mounted on there, and I've skipped some of this stuff out here. Uh, you'll see some of it in that other video. The one where I was trying to run the Tillotson without a fuel pump. And this one, I just now put the fuel pump on. And I pulled and I'm like, what the heck? This thing should have fired by now. And I happened to remember, oh, wait a minute. I didn't bleed the air out of the system. So, yeah, there we go. Okay. <laughs> it just took one pull and I've got fuel gushing everywhere. And, yeah. That's all I needed to do with the high price of gasoline now. Run it out all over the workbench. But I went into a little bit more detail on the, the fuel pump installation in the other video. It's uh, the Tillotson, will it run without a, with a fuel pump or without a fuel pump? Just a little fun. Oh yeah. Oh, it's rich. Man, it's rich. Whoa. Keep that choke open. We don't need any more fuel right now. Yeah, I had run that low speed adjustment out about two and a half turns. Well, I've got to turn it in. I am it is way rich right now. Okay. I'm leaning it out now, so now I'm going to set my idle down. Lean it out some more. Okay. Lower the idle down a little bit. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's sounding much better now. Much better. And I ended up at one and a quarter turns out on the low speed. And if you guys want to install one of those fuel pumps, here's a little diagram of it. And it shows you how the fuel inlet, you got a vacuum pulse at the top and then a fuel outlet. And that's all I got for today, guys. Thanks for hanging out with me. We'll see you next time.